How's it going friends and welcome to the channel. I hope you guys have a brew in a bicky ready because in this video I embarrassingly use a decal for a seat belt, some excessive masking, I finally test out my new gallery airbrush and Sid from Quality Control comes in and makes a surprise spot inspection. I'm sure it's no surprise to you guys that we'll be starting with the cockpit. It's also no surprise that from Tamiya it is a extremely well detailed one at that. I've kind of made the cockpit into sub assemblies just to make painting of the cockpit a lot easier. Also before painting there are a few small details that need to be put onto the cockpit walls. And we also add the walls to the supercharger intake. So at this point you also want to be making the decision whether you want the canopy open or closed because the frame sill and this part of the airframe uh, just behind the pilot's sort of headrest um, because this part is uh, slightly narrower for the canopy uh, to go over or wider than the case that I'm doing mine for it to be closed. Then it was straight into painting. For this I used XF60 which is dark yellow for this. It's not completely accurate but it was relatively close to the right color also for this kit i wanted a relatively nice quick simple and easy build so i haven't gone overly overboard with this I haven't really bought actually it's the first time i haven't bought any aftermarket stuff for a model i also kept everything relatively basic even the scratches which i put them in your usual high traffic areas of a cockpit and given all the dark and black surfaces a nice simple light gray dry brush Painting the seat was a relatively simple affair. I used leather brown from Vallejo and I basically treated this as more of a glaze than an actual uh, heavy painting and just built up a few layers to bring the opacity up. And because I thought you'd be able to see quite well from the quarter panels from the cockpit window, I thought I'd add a couple of wires coming from the instrument panel using lead wire. These were later on painted black. After I gave the cockpit a rudimentary pin wash, I went back and decided to actually add the instrument panels. Tamiya decals can be a little bit thick at times, but I think for this, they went in really nicely with some micro solid set, and I was actually quite happy with them. And speaking of decals, I embarrassingly used the decals seat belts which I'm not proud of but like I says I didn't bother buying aftermarket for this kit. Now tell me it give you the option of having one side of the aircraft uh, completely clear so you can see inside. It's not the best if I'm being completely honest. I mean you can see from here it's it's very cloudy it's not overly clear uh, in all honesty and I think he's pretty much a complete waste of time it's it's kind of a shame i think it's a cool idea but if the clear was like actually clear i think it would have been a lot better so going with obviously the non-clear part i had the two halves glued together and the cockpit tub nicely slid into the bottom of the aircraft the wings were no issue whatsoever two halves as as per usual uh, pretty much as you glued them together the seams pretty much disappeared almost there was very little cleanup needed on the leading edges there is a lower panel that has to go on before we fixed the wings to the aircraft but there's also a small hole that we need to drill out for the oil filter unfortunately later on throughout the build i lost it and it just pinged off into oblivion attaching the wings to the lower half of the aircraft was one of those lovely satisfying fits pretty much just snaps into place with no gaps whatsoever and it was just just one of those beautiful moments when something goes together really nicely next was a case of just adding a few bits and pieces so the radiator was fitted as well as this quite elaborate um slatting system that goes in which was surprisingly quite easy and simple to build and then it was a case of just adding the wing gun ports tail plane and all that sort of stuff so i didn't really feel much of it because it all went together really straightforward now we can move on to a more interesting part of the build and that is the painting. So really the base of this is a sort of polished aluminium. So what I've done is I've based it in a semi-gloss black and then went over an odd few panels using a sort of like a whitey uh, grey colour. Again like says, picking out a few panels to just generate kind of like a bit more of an interest rather than just a flat uh, aluminium finish. And I used Tamiya's flat aluminium XF16. And here starts one of the many layers of masking. Now I've decided to do most of the markings 
by painting them out rather than using the decals. This is mainly because there's a band that runs down the side of the aircraft and I didn't really want to try and use the decals for this. So for the roundels I've used vinyl mass for this because it was clear and a lot easier for me to make out the original roundels. Also masking off the tail because all this is obviously red. I used a flat red and a ready brown for this. Mostly darkened for the panels and then just slightly lightened for the main roundels themselves. Masking two was the anti-glare panel on the nose. I used two layers of chipping fluid for this and then used flat black and flat with a hint of flat blue in there to give a slight sort of tonal variation uh, on it. So rather than being just black, I think there's also a little bit of NATO black in there as well. So it wasn't just a solid black. Once it was touched dry, I got a brush with some tap water and just basically painted that across the nose and then with pretty much a cocktail stick and an airbrush cleaning brush uh, just went over the front just to give it a few scuffs again as always trying to make my models look like they've been in some sort of service this was a little bit heavier than I actually planned it to be but I was still quite chuffed with it anyway the third masking session was the blue band I mentioned earlier this is what I didn't want to really use the decal for because I thought it's just going to be a pain in the backside trying to get it around that air filter the fourth masking session you can see I've already done the red marking around the flap and the gun bays the fifth was the yellow marker panels on the leading edge of the wing as you can see i put a sort of ready pink uh, down first which made the yellow a lot more vibrant when i sprayed that on that was just simple flat tummy yellow then i did a little bit of chipping just using again the same flat yellow and then adding a little bit of buff uh, to that and i did about two or three layers of this adding a little bit more buff every single time and then after this unfortunately i had a little bit of a disaster so what it turns out to be is I've been using Halford's Lacquer Clear for some obviously clear coating and uh, if you lay it on a bit too thick on a metallic paint it, it doesn't really like it. So unfortunately uh, for probably about the fifth time uh, I had to mask everything off and respray everything. Once I've done that and used an acrylic gloss instead I moved on to decaling and unfortunately had another small minor disaster somehow managed to spill some tea on my decals so these ones in particular I had to cut out separately and miss out some of the smaller detail ones which to be fair most of which you wouldn't have noticed and not been there now I know this seems a bit of a weird way around doing things but according to the decal and marking instructions that most of these camera lines are quite close to the markings and whatnot so I thought it'd be best to do it this way around. Some of the areas you can still see I have masked off because I was a bit worried about overspray because it's not something I'm used to doing. But I was also excited for doing this because I've never done it before and it was also a chance to really use my new airbrush that was sent to me for review by Gallery which I've done in a previous video and I was really surprised and really chuffed at the results. I got really nice tight camo lines as you can see there but if you want to see that review video that is linked in the description down below there's also an affiliate link down there now there's obviously no extra charge to you but i make a little bit off each sale so both of us obviously would appreciate you checking that link out so we'd also like to give a massive shout out to gallery for sending this airbrush for review and also a massive shout out to my channel members that are helping support the videos these are Barney Mins and John Alec from John Alec Scale Modeling. If you'd also like to help the channel out there are links in the description down below. So another little detail I'm trying to start adding into my models is the brake lines and I've been using lead wires for these as you can see I drilled a small hole in it and then just glued it up the leg in the right position and added the outer panel for the um, wheel, bay, wheel, wheel bay gear things yeah that one. Um, and then obviously just added all that in into place. Then all that was left to do was add the last couple of decals that I didn't really need to add um, earlier on, mainly because one of which were the kill markings and then needs to go over the camouflage. So after the previous hiccup, I've gone back to good old acrylic gloss varnish for the next weathering stages. So I decided to do something a little bit different and use oil paints rather than my usual enamels for my weathering. 
So we used Windsor and Newton's burnt umber for this. I just thinned it out with some enamel thinners and just applied it the same pretty much way as I would a normal panel wash. And then for a clean up with a damp brush, again, some enamel thinners and then just pushing it into the panels like I usually do. So for the exhaust stains, I used burnt umber again, but I also added a little bit of yellow ochre and some black. The exhaust stains from DB605 is kind of a oily yellow looking stain it's very odd it's not like the conventional way it's usually sort of black soot so i added all that on and then blended it in with a dry brush and i did have to go that a couple of times just to get the right sort of i also did some oil stains pretty much using again burnt some it's the standard for for the base of most of this uh, weathering I, I added a little bit again of yellow ochre in there to give it more of an oily look and just for some sort of like dirt uh, sort of deposits uh, making it look like it come you know operating from a sort of like a potentially like a dirt field or a grassy field just again for something a little bit different uh, i just sort of sprayed that sprayed it mopped it around the wheels really and then as you can see i've done with a cocktail stick i did a little bit of splatter in there just to give the impression again it may have been on a you know a, a bit of a wet airfield at one point and you know the mud has just been spread around the aircraft the exhaust stacks again i was doing something different i'm not 100 percent sure why i did it this way but I, I felt it was going to give a more accurate look to the stacks so i started off with a silver paint and then i actually there's actually the one time i did use enamels i used dark brown enamels for green vehicles for this i gave about two coats over this and i felt it kind of give the more accurate the german exhaust stubs Again, it was just something I was more trying out just to give a different finish on these stacks. And then the last thing I did was add a slightly heavier, less diluted version of the exhaust stain over the stubs. I personally actually think these gave probably the most accurate looking stubs I have done. Um, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But I think in the overall finish of the model, they look pretty good. At this point, I was quite happy to start removing the canopy masks and they turned out quite nicely there was no issues no fogging or anything like that so and they, they, they're very clear uh, compared to that side panel and you get a really nice view inside the cockpit even with the canopy closed and then it was on to the last couple of details so paint and navigation lights i always think it's best if you're doing navigation lights just to actually have a silver base and then using a clear paint over the top and for this i've used tamiya uh, clear red and green for the opposite side when i started to do the rigging sid from quality control made an appearance and as quickly as he appeared he disappeared i'm not really sure what he wanted uh, but it was a good thing because it meant i could carry on with what i was doing without being hindered by quality control and for the aerial i use migomo's rigging it's an elasticated thread so if you do catch it you shouldn't really break either the thread or any part of the model and this is quite simply all glued super glued into place okay my friends so it's nearly time to show you the finished build but before that i want to say a massive thank you guys for watching the video I do hope you have enjoyed it if you're new around here and you have um also watch some other videos at the end of this one but if you have consider liking subscribing to the channel sharing the videos to others that may enjoy this type of stuff it really helps boost the channel a lot and, and, and brings in a lot of massive support as well. If you'd like to support further, there are links in the description down below. There's also channel, channel membership uh, down there as well, so check that out if you'd like to help further that way. But again, just liking, watching, sharing massively helps the channel out. So whichever way you decide, I, I honestly generally appreciate it. So anyway... It's time to show you the finished build.